Did we lose somebody? Yeah, I think we have some. Looks like we have a little connectivity problem. Some couple folks are dropping in and out, so we'll just have to bear with that. Um, but welcome to our third and final Meet the Candidate session for the 2016 at-large board of directors seat for the association. Thanks everyone for joining in today in all of your many, many time zones. Um, so just a reminder, a few housekeeping notes. Um, anyone who's listening in, you guys are on mute to keep the background noise to a minimum. And uh, for our panelists, you can also do the same. You have a mute button for yourself. Feel free to use it in case you, like me, have a very loud cat who likes to meow inappropriately or children or anything else. You can use that mute button. Um, but just because you're on mute doesn't mean we don't want to hear from folks. So if you do have questions today, feel free to use the Q&A uh, button uh, on your Zoom control panel to ask questions of the candidates. I will relay those over. And then let's talk about how we're going to do this today. We're going to have statements from the candidates first, um, and you'll see them while they speak. Uh, and when they're done, we're going to go into Q&A. Uh, we're recording the session, so we will put that up on our YouTube channel when it's done, and we will also put that link up on the election section of our site, so look out for that. And just a reminder that uh, although we do these live Q&A sessions here uh, for Meet the Candidates, you can also interact with the ca candidates in an ongoing way on their profile page, their candidate profile page. So if you go to the elections area, you can see all the candidates. If you click through to their candidate profile page, there's a Q&A section there. So candidates, keep an eye out there for those interactions. Um, and community, feel free to ask questions there as well. Um, and so you'll have from now until March 7th for that Q&A format. And then on March 7th, that's when voting begins. So please vote and encourage everyone else to vote as well. So those are all the housekeeping announcements, and unless anyone has any questions, are you guys ready to move forward? You know our intro statements? Okay, we will do that. So like I said, we'll go in alphabetical order. So um, our first two folks definitely have some connectivity issues, so I'm going to do my best to make sure we give them a fair shot, and, and they might take more than a couple of minutes to get this done, so let's see how it goes. But Ahmad, if you're able to connect, uh, unmute yourself, and uh, share a little bit about who you are and why you're running, that would be fantastic. Okay. Uh, hopefully the connection uh, can be stable uh, uh, to let me complete my introduction. Uh, so uh, this is me, Ahmad Zain. I'm from Egypt. Uh, uh, 31 years old. Uh, I have uh, founded the Egypt uh, community for Drupal. It's uh, Drupal Egypt. And also I have uh, founded and co-founded the Morzan 2 uh, uh, related to uh, the web uh, development uh, based on Drupal. Uh, and now I'm working, I'm acting at, uh, as a development manager in uh, Link Development. It's a uh, uh, multinational uh, uh, international uh, company. It's a big company in Egypt. And we have uh, a source, uh, open source uh, department. Um, uh, uh, and we are uh, using Drupal as a main. Uh, development uh, <coughs> framework uh, that's uh... oh I hope that he was saying and that's about it because, <laughs> because we just lost <laughs> poor Ahmad <laughs> uh, okay well, we'll see if he's able to, to join back on uh, in the meantime Ashraf are you there I am here. I'm not sure why my video is not working with this program, um, but can you guys hear me clearly? Absolutely, yeah. So why don't, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Okay. Um, hi, I'm Ashraf. I have been a web developer for 13 years, I'm working in Drupal development for about five years. Um, I work at Acquia as a technical architect, but I also founded Debug Academy. Uh, company where 
I train people with any range of web development experience from none at all to, you know, se senior programmers um, to use Drupal. Um, and uh, I, I've encountered a lot of different people and different perspectives, which I thought would be helpful to bring into uh, the Drupal Association um, on a regular basis. So I regularly interact with people who are new to programming, as well as people who are experienced programmers, both of which are using Drupal for the first time. Um, That's it for the most part. I enjoy playing soccer in the little spare time that I have. Um, I have a one-year-old son. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, I feel strongly that, feel strongly about opening the programming or development field up to um, a larger group of people in terms of um, stripping out some of the elitism uh, that there seems to be in the area. Um, I just think it's a lot more accessible than people who haven't tried it feel it is before trying it. Great. Thank you. All right. So Ahmad is back. So we're going to try one more time to let Ahmad finish up his, his statement. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, this is me, Ahmed Zain from uh, Egypt. Uh, uh, I have uh, said I am now working as a development manager in the next uh, Egyptian company with an. Uh, uh, a lot of branches in, uh, all over the world. Uh, I have founded the uh, Egypt Drupal community for about uh, up to four years now. And uh, uh, I have founded and co-founded uh, more than two companies based on uh, uh, Drupal as a main framework for development. And my main uh, activity is, uh, uh, as I used to be a developer, uh, from about, uh, it's now about uh, uh, 11 years old. Uh, and that's all about me now. Okay, I think we made it. That's good. And Ahmad, I think if you uh, can... I'm done, so... Uh, Great. We can and move I... to the next, <laughs> next one. We will do that. And I think that if you turn off your video, um, that might help okay. your audio. Just for the future. I'm okay. Awesome. All right, next up in the alphabet, Danny. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, so, my name is Danny Norton. I'm the Director of User Experience at Pegasystems in Cambridge, working on a Drupal team on several global web properties. Um, I also have been an active design and UX contributor in the Drupal community. Um, my most recent work um, includes redesigning the Drupal.org user profile, also participating, well, actually catalyzing the front-end banana consensus or whatever the hell it is. Basically, I pulled Morton out into a hallway with Post-its and told him to talk it out. And then we got the classy theme and the stable theme, and things were pretty happy, I thought. Um, and I also run the Design for Drupal camp in Boston every year. Um, I think the things that I really do well are bringing people together and helping to bring consensus and helping to map out really complex things and make them a little simpler. So I think all of those skills are things that I really want to bring to a role on the um, Drupal Association board. I also have an adorable daughter who um, a couple people just saw who is now watching Frozen. So Awesome. I like it when we hear about the kids. <laughs> 
All right, thanks, Danny. Um, and next up is Dave Hernandez. <clears throat> Hello, hi. Uh, my name is David Hernandez. Um, I've been involved in the IT industry for about 20 years and working with Drupal for about eight years. Um, as primarily a site builder, developer, and front end person. Um, the current job I'm working at FFW, where I'm the manager of learning and contributions, where I um, create training programs for uh, internally for the company to train developers. And I also coordinate all of our internal operations for contributing to Drupal and contributing to open source in general. Uh, I've been involved a lot with the Drupal community as a core contributor, as a mentor, um, as a founding member of um, New Jersey Drupal Group, where I help um, organize all of our events, our meetups, our co-workings, and I'm on the organizing committee for Drupal Camp New Jersey, which we just had our fifth camp. So yay, Drupal Camp New Jersey. Um, I've also been involved with um, governance matters for the Drupal Association as a member of the software working group, which I was part of for the last two years. Um, I've also been a session speaker, and pretty much involved in all areas that I can really find myself involved in in Drupal community. Um, I want to join the board because I want to make sure that we have a continued focus on local groups, which is what I'm most interested in. And I also want to uh, make sure that we maintain a developer um, point of view on the board as well. Thank you. Nice, thanks David. Okay, next up, Hilmar. Hi, I'm Hilmar. I uh, call myself the Drupal Viking. I'm from the land of ice and fire, Iceland. Um, I've been, uh, I work as a senior developer for national broadcast station here in Iceland. Uh, I also am a CEO and lead developer of IS Project, my own company here. We do uh, mostly uh, small, uh, site development for people that uh, not necessarily have the big box on uh, but have really cool project that they want to work on so I do that in my spare time um, I'm also developing right now a university program for Reykjavik University based on CMS system in general and focusing really hardly on Drupal and showing people in the university uh, uh, area that PHP is no longer the big bad wolf uh, which was PHP 4 we are now uh, just uh, like all the others just <laughs> a regular programming language and and I wanted to show people how awesome and cool Drupal is so I was able to put that in a program hopefully starting next fall I'm a co-founder of Drupal Iceland, uh, and I'm on the organizing team for Drupal Com Camp Northern Lights, which will be held in 2017 here in Iceland. I'm running because the love of the community. I uh, found you guys first in, uh, in Prague in 2013, and ever since I have been uh, very active trying to um, uh, get into the community and, and work for the community because as a whole, I can just see we we I've I've never seen such a big family in any programming or um, uh, yeah, and I want to bring DrupalCon Europe to Iceland, so that's why I'm running. Thank Great. you. Thanks, Omar. All right, and John Kennedy, you are up next. Thanks, Holly. Uh, my name's John Kennedy. Um, and I'm a product manager for Acquia. I, I manage the uh, Lightning distribution, which is an enterprise authoring distribution of Drupal. Um, I'm also the program manager for the, uh, the Drupal module acceleration program, um, where we uh, accelerate certain uh, Drupal 8 modules in the community uh, to, to grow Drupal adoption. Um, you know, I've, I've been in Acquia for a few years now, um, I was also head of solutions architecture for Europe for a while for Acquia for about 18 months um, and, and built that team up uh, prior to that I was I, uh, I worked at uh, Commerce guys uh, managing their UK branch and, and built that up um, from from no branch to <laughs> there being a branch <laughs> um, 
And, uh, and prior to that, I was running my own Drupal shop. Um, I think, you know, the, I've been around Drupal for about 10 years. I've been a, around web for, for a bit longer than that. Um, I think the, the reason that I want to uh, be on the board is there's lots of interesting discussions uh, happening right now about uh, where Drupal should go next. And, um, you know, I've been encountering a lot of those in my work uh, with the module acceleration program and, um, and building a distribution in eight, um, you know, what capabilities uh, people want. And, you know, I've, I've had uh, some good contact with some large organizations about this, uh, you know, our big clients like uh, Pfizer and, uh, and Warner and, and, um, and others. Um, but I'd really like to do a, a proper consensus of the Drupal community about how they use Drupal and where they want Drupal to go. And I think uh, the Drupal Association has the mandate to do that and can be a lightning rod for a discussion. And I think um, by taking a, a spot on the, on the board, I'd be able to do that more effectively. Um, so some of my experience, just to finish off, I've been a, a board member of the Systems Administrator Guild of Australia. Um, and I've been on uh, boards of a, another couple of smaller non nonprofits, um, and I've been around um, around tech for a long time. Um, so I hope that's enough. Thank you. All right, after John is Justin. Hello, everyone. Thanks for this. Uh, thanks for the time you're taking to watch, as well as thank you for the the potential candidates. Um, I appreciate your time also. Uh, the Drupal community is such a fascinating place for me, and, and having been in the Drupal community for uh, a relatively short period of time, I, I can't say that uh, I've ever been passionate of, as passionate about another community. Um, and not only because it makes me all of my money, but also because of the uh, incredible ability for each person to share. So I hope to fuel that sharing process, as uh, most of the candidates will talk about. Um, really bringing the community together is something uh, that, that needs to happen and is happening in its own natural form, but expediting that process is something not only I'm prepared to do, but also I'm, I'm passionate about doing so. Uh, currently, I serve um, with the Asheville Drupal Users Group to organize the Asheville Drupal Camp every single year, as well as this year we're bringing the first North American project management track to DrupalCon New Orleans, and I serve as the track leader for that. And I'm uh, incredibly blessed and, and um, happy to work with Commerce Guys in the United States and now a part of Acro Media as a operations manager and project manager. So organization comes naturally and easy to me. Um, and I'm excited to bring those skills also to the Drupal Association. Um, but as a, a true project, project manager, I will um, over uh, deliver under time and uh, go ahead and pass the mic on. Awesome, thanks. Also, you guys, I'm being a terrible timekeeper today, so I need you to keep me, keep me on task. All right, Ken, your turn. Hello, everyone. My name is Ken Dillard. I am. I have the privilege of having 17 direct reports. Um, I am a director of customer care of a web hosting company. For me, this is not about uh, passing on any information about what we do in our hosting. It's about being able to take the experiences that I have on a daily basis, because I'm me, my team, my organization, we're constantly dealing with end users of Drupal, and they were also dealing with developers of Drupal. And so we get a great, uh, a great gumbo, if I can use that term, of, of experiences and feedback. We're not talking from a chat board or from some sort of listing somewhere uh, on the web, we're talking real live people where I'm getting real live feedback. So as Drupal 8 was being released, got a lot of buzz, a lot of feedback from that. Um, and we passed that on as the opportunity presented itself. The reason I want to be on this board and I think I would be an excellent choice is because I'm coming in with a desire to open up the, uh, the community base. We have to be more inclusive as it pertains to Drupal. We need a stronger international presence. We need a younger group demographic to start getting with Drupal right now. So when nine is released, they're already excited about and acclimated. We can't keep bringing the same group from seven to eight and then from eight to nine. We got to grow the group. And then more importantly, we have to tap into our minority base. And there are a lot of demographics that are untapped with Drupal being out there on the table. So I'm very excited about that and I have a very clear vision about how to make that happen and also the other user groups that are around the world and in America, make them a part of the community. 
it's going to be a community. It has to be a community where everybody feels like they're involved. That's what I'll do. Well timed. <laughs> All right, Matthew. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Matthew. Um, I'm currently one of your elected uh, Drupal Association board members, and I'm looking to be reelected to continue the work that I've been doing. Um, the big thing that I've been doing on the on the board at this point is chairing the governance committee, and I've done that for the last two years. Um, in that capacity, I've uh, been involved in uh, implementing board member term limits. So prior to prior to uh, uh, this, uh, board members uh, um, were able to stay on the board for uh, an indefinite period of time. That's helpful in terms of reducing burnout and bringing um, on additional, you know. Uh, uh, creativity, increasing the term limits, uh, uh, the term of elected board, mem board members from one year to two years, and also staggering, staggering uh, elected board member terms so they overlap. Um, basically, I'm a governance geek, and I've loved doing the work that I've been uh, doing with the, with the board up, up until now. I also helped craft the current vision and mission statement uh, for the association and helped fundraise in the Drupal 8 Accelerate program. Um, so what, how, the way that I'm feeling is that I'm basically a proven effective member of the team already and I'd like to continue that work for another couple of years. I have nearly 20 years of experience in open source technology and nonprofits um, and my first, uh, my first DrupalCon was in Barcelona back in 2007. Uh, in the Drupal world, I'm a project manager. Um, I've worked as an independent consultant, as a small business owner, tech lead for, for the migration of examiner.com from Cold Fusion to Drupal 7. I've been a leader in agencies, and I'm currently, through App Innovation, uh, the engineering lead for Pfizer's healthcare professional portal. Why am I the ideal candidate? Um, well, I've got multiple experiences with nonprofits and nonprofit boards, two years with the Drupal Association, nine years with Drupal Camp Colorado, four years with the Charter School in Colorado. I've gone through board training with BoardSource and uh, with the Colorado Co Coalition of Charter Schools. Uh, I've got a ton of experience with different cultures. My team spans the United States, Europe, the United Kingdom, India, and Canada. Um, and myself, I'm personally a citizen of Canada, the United States, and the United Kingdom. Spend a lot of time in all three of those places. My master's degree focused on nonprofit governance and technology. I helped organize DrupalCon in Denver and Drupal Camp Colorado for the last eight years. And I've spoken at numerous Drupal events since 2008. So I very, very much want to finish up my work as the community representative. And I'm hoping that I'll be granted that opportunity to serve just a couple more years. Thanks very much. Thanks, Matthew. Uh, Shamala. Hey, hi. Hi, everybody. So it's uh, 5.30 in the morning here. <laughs> I'm so excited to be with the Drupal community this morning. Um, I'm Shamala here from Chennai, India. I'm the director of my company, Unimity Solutions. I'm actually a civil engineer from a very prominent institute here in India called IIT. Um, I took a break in my career to spend time with my kids and then just jump back to IT after. Um, since then, most of my time has been with Drupal. I've been an active member of the Drupal community over the last nine years. And I've also been part of the initial years voting for TA Association, which is a few participants. Today here, it's so exciting that we have each of the candidates here so much to share about their contributions and are from different cultural backgrounds, bringing in different skills and competencies. I think this clearly shows how Drupal has grown in the last years. Um, I'm excited I'm contesting for the director at large post for the association board. Um, so what do I bring to the Drupal association? I think I want to bring to the Drupal Association a representation of one of the largest communities, um, India. I want to bring to the Drupal Association my skills, a combination of having been in senior management, community building, and technology. I'm very confident that I'll be able to support the association in many strategic decision making, specifically with respect to increasing awareness, fundraising, and community building activities for Drupal. Having worked in multiple initiatives in the Drupal project, I understand and align myself with the key goals of the association. Some of my 
community activities include having been with the mobile initiative as a project manager. Um, this involved bringing uh, uh, and aligning different participations of different people with different skills, having interacted with people from different communities. Uh, the Drupal.org design. I also understand uh, the local communities and having been involved in fundraising activities for Drupal Association, specifically the Drupal Aid Acceleration Fund. So what is the value that I'm going to bring as being part of the Drupal Association that I can't do otherwise? Um, I think it's very true that board or not, I have some ideas on how organizations can support and facilitate and improving the quality and quantity of contributions. And that's going to be my vision in the coming year. I feel this role could just give me a better visibility and make it easy for me to gain support from other organizations. Thank you all. Thanks, Shamla. Okay, and Sunit. Hi, everyone. I Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I assume everyone has had a chance to look at the profile that we submitted online, but uh, really brief. I've been kind of doing open source and I'm dating myself here uh, for, can everyone hear me? I'm sorry. Oh yeah, you're good. You're good. Um, uh, for, you know, uh, a little over 30 years, um, uh, specifically Drupal for uh, since uh, well I started tracking Drupal in 2005 first failed project in 2006 and since 2007 it's been Drupal only um, my background is tech I've been in tech I'm here I'm based here in the San Francisco uh, Bay Area um, always worked for product companies uh, it's kind of like the first time I'm running a, a services shop or a small you know 45 percent shop doing Drupal only Drupal and mobile um, I've got a PhD in computer stuff, a bunch of publications, and 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 nearly a thousand citations, uh, along with the patent stuff like that. I have I have some experience hurting camps, as it were. You know, uh, having submitted proposals to the ANSI SQL community, SQL J community, and other you know um, uh, other boards, so to speak. Um, I'm on the board of Immunize India, which is currently now the world's largest free vaccine reminder system. Uh, uh, before I got into the world of Drupal, I used to run a uh, $100 million business unit at uh, Oracle selling business intelligence products. Why am I interested in becoming a board member after all these years being in Drupal? So I think that Drupal needs to think a little bit out of the box. It needs to expand its vision, grow markets, as it were, right? Um, a few things. Um, every three to five years, you know, the enterprises tend to rebuild their website. Sometimes Drupal wins, sometimes Drupal loses. So that's one aspect. Drupal can do a whole lot more than just build web websites. It, it can be deployed as an application server. This is something we have done as an organization uh, for, with several clients. Um, I, I think we have to try and do a better job of you know, quantifying the Drupal economy. I think we should try and find some key lagging leading indicators that give us a sense of what the Drupal ecosystem is. For instance, you know, we can do annual surveys of companies to see how many people are employed full-time doing Drupal. You know. I want to look at you know how we can expand the Drupal ecosystem. You know, uh, distributions were one way of, of expanding Drupal's reach, but really, uh, embedded Drupal with decoupled Drupal that becomes a whole lot easier. Uh, new products, new capabilities should be built on top, and we should you know move away from distros. Um, in short, we want to create the kind of ecosystem that Oracle, Microsoft, other product companies have done for their products. Um, you know, and then, then look into like, you know, what does it mean to monetize Drupal for the greater good? For example, you know, just make to have marketplace for modules. Uh, should we create bounties for specific kind of connectors or modules or other capabilities and so forth? Um, that's it. My two minutes are up. <laughs> Thanks, Unit. All right. And we have one more. Tom Grandy, round things out for us. Thank you, Holly. Lots of excellent candidates here tonight. Uh, thank you all for taking the time to join in. Uh, my name is Tom Grandy. Like I said, I am in Ohio. Um, work for 23 different school districts, both public and private. Uh, I'm basically a one-man shop with one other person uh, who wears many hats. So it's a very, very small group uh, doing a lot of work. Um, we do have a graphic company we work with as far as doing some front-end development for us, but for the most part, it's just a very, very tiny shop. Uh, so as far as having $100 million projects, we don't. Uh, but we do 
uh, represent what I think is a lot of the fringe element. Um, a lot of people who are either in small shops or doing Drupal work by themselves. And I would like to represent that community on the board and make sure that they have a voice. Um, I think we have some excellent candidates that are there already. I also think we have a, an overabundance of people from the United States. So me running as somebody from the United States, I'd like to see more people um, from other countries uh, better represent the Drupal community. Uh, looking at one more minute, I'll say um, I'd like to see some sort of initiatives. And since I do work with schools, uh, K-12 specifically, that when we talk about you know, co.org or STEM programs, trying to get Drupal into the, the secondary, um, maybe middle schools as well. Uh, no reason why that can't be done. Cisco did it, why can't Drupal? So thank you. Hmm. Thank you. Okay, those are all of our intros. Thanks for doing those. So now we're gonna move over to the Q&A section. So just a reminder for our live listeners, you have a Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Feel free to drop questions in there uh, for the candidates. I'll be happy to pass those along and get them answered for you. Um, but why don't we get started with something that we talked a little bit about in the last two meetings, but from a slightly different frame. Um, and uh, let me just uh, go back to um, at DrupalCon Asia, uh, Denise Cooper, one of our board members, and you know, very significant open source contributor, uh, did the, the keynote on day two of the conference, and she referenced, um, well, one of the things she said is that Drupal has one of the most likable communities on the planet, open source communities on the planet, which I totally agree with. <laughs> um, I think we do have one of the most likable communities. Um, but one of the reasons that she, she attributes uh, for that likableness is um, the, the, diversity uh, that we have in the community, um, which she, you know, feels like is, is modeled by the diversity in the core team, in particular women and citing, you know, Angie's prominent role in core, uh, core development, uh, you know, making Drupal more accessible for other women who want to participate in the project. So, so we've definitely, we've talked about this kind of diversity, bringing different people into the project. Uh, for a long time, but we've also talked about how hard it is. So what like concrete steps would you like to see the association take to make the community more welcoming for, you know, not your typical engineer? And we'll start with Shamala, and then I'll go to Tom. I think um, with the current contestants being across countries, the kind of setting the tone that Drupal has actually reached out to a large, uh, larger base of cultural background and bringing in different skills and competencies. The strategy would be that um, we have Drupal Association, but I don't think at any point you can have representation from all communities in the board or in the Drupal Association, but the strategy must be that you work with local representatives in a more frequent periodicity. Today, it's only happening during camps and events like such, but we probably need to go beyond that and have um, meetings with local representatives. And this would really um, make it more inclusive of a larger base of community. Awesome, thank you. All right, we're gonna go to Tom and then Ken and then Danny. Thank you. Uh, you. You mentioned there at the end, you know, not only just diversity between genders, diversity between cultures, but also diversity between the your, your specialties, you know, not necessarily just engineers. You know, if I look at the many hats that I wear, I'm not your PHP coder type. You know, I, I, I'm a project manager. Some days I'm a graphic designer. Um, so I, I kind of see it all, but, you know, it, where I see us falling a little bit short, and I said it before a bit, was you know having enough representation from all of the different communities that Drupal serves, and it's growing um, as we ex expand into other countries. You know, in DrupalCon Asia, you were there. You're suffering from the jet lag right now, Holly. Um, it was a huge success, from what I've heard. I wasn't there, but you know, soon we're going to see other countries. You know, maybe China. Um, 
that's going to, they're going to be coming on board as well. And how do we get them to, to represent? Well, obviously we're going to bring some of their communities on board. Um, but how do we get that all the way up to the board? Like, sorry, Shamala was saying, uh, we can't necessarily have somebody from every single country represented on the board, but to get the, the word up from what they would like uh, the board members to hear, uh, we have to come up with some sort of model to get that done. Uh, and currently, we don't have that, so thank you. Thanks, Tom. All right, Ken and then Danny and David, I saw you. As I stated in my intro, I'm, I'm fully prepared to just walk in and, and tackle that. That's, that's my baby, to make <laughs> Drupal more diverse, to make it uh, a more international presence. But diversity is one of those things where it's great to talk about. It looks great on the t-shirt. It's wonderful on a company banner and it looks even better on a bumper sticker. But if you don't have someone that's actually committed to making it happen, someone that is really looking to for real change, then it's no more than a good slogan on a email letterhead. That's all it is. And so again, I opened up my intro by saying that's exactly what needs to happen. If we look at Drupal right now, Drupal is continuing to bring along the same types of uh, personalities and groups that it is bought from six to seven to eight. If we're not growing, we're dying. So we have to now start looking at how do we market Drupal to a younger demographic, regardless of culture, how do we market to a younger demographic, and then how do we bring aboard more minorities? It has to be made a priority and not just talk or rhetoric or something that just sounds good to say in this moment. So again, it's something I'm prepared to do. Regardless if I'm bought on board or not, I will help someone do that. Awesome, thanks, Ken. And Danny, then one second, sorry. And then I know David, and then I see Matthew's hand. Hilmar, did I see yours too? Yeah, Hilmar and Sunit, okay. All right, so, um, I mean, the one thing, obviously, I run Design for Drupal which is specifically a camp for people who are in Drupal as non-developers. So every year we bring 200 some, 200 plus people who are designers, project managers, manager, uh, managers of people, people who are building Drupal businesses to get together, share best practices, share knowledge, and just sort of commiserate on what it means to be a designer in a developer's world. Um, it's a great personal source of satisfaction for me and one of the things I get on a soapbox about and I do get on many soapboxes. <laughs> um, I think when I think of the stuff that I would do beyond that, one of the things I always turn back to is growing up um, poor on the south side of Providence and seeing people in my own family struggle to lift themselves out of poverty and knowing what potential there is for Drupal. I mean, it certainly changed my life and helped me get myself out of poverty. And I think of things like Girls Who Code and all of these different things that, you know, help people learn really marketable skills. And so I feel like apprentice programs that actually focus on lower income youth could be a really valuable addition to the Drupal community and something that more Drupal businesses should sponsor. Thanks, Danny. Uh, okay, so going from Danny, we're going to go to David, and then Helmar, and then Sunit, and John. Oh, and so I forgot a Matthew in there, too. What? Okay. Sorry, go ahead, David. I was going to say, I, I agree with everyone saying so far. I mean, it definitely requires leadership, uh, but I think beyond just a leader, what we really need are leaders, and I think we need to find a way to promote um, not just um, finding ways to create diversity that come from leadership top down, but from bottom up as well, and promote a lot of this in the local organizations, and find ways that we can really um, develop ambassadors and mentors within the community, people who can be highly visible, and really recruit that sort of next generation and expand Drupal into those areas that we really want. Um, and to add to that, I also think that we shouldn't undervalue communication in the way that we communicate to people, not just how we outreach, but the way we say things. Um, just some simple examples of things that I've done in the past is simply by renaming events that we have, we've noticed how that affects the number of people and the different types of people that show up to those events. 
you know, changing things from sprints to calling them community days and things like that. Um, it really changes a lot of people's perspective and their expectations to something that we want, which is to create something that's more generalized and will promote a greater number of people and a greater range of people from showing up. Awesome. Thanks, David. Um, okay, let's go Matthew and then Helmar, Suna and John. There's Matthew looking for the mute button. He found it. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I've got it. My my computer appears to be under underpowered for the for the video, um, which causes that little beach ball to come up. So I think one of the big things that uh, that we need to be focused on is uh, is uh, helping helping um, communities, whether it's uh, minorities or women or 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 project managers or designers, have a voice. Um, and uh, one of the challenges that we've had in, in the past is that, uh, is that Drupal, um, while people say um, uh, code is gold often, um, I think that that's shifted. Because I think that when you, when you, when you look at the, the community as a whole, most people are, stick around in the community because of the people. Um, the people have become very, very important to the, uh, to the, to the, uh, to the energy of the community. So I think that we need to find ways to to provide a voice to to those who who are uh, not coders um, again uh, across across different areas. Uh, to that end, this past year um, at uh, Drupal Camp Colorado, what we did was we we uh, took our our, uh, our um, profits and half the profits um, uh, half the profit that we made uh, went to the National Council of Women in Technology. Uh, with the idea that we would be uh, we would be bringing um, um, funds to 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 young women who uh, who wanted to um, learn how to code and uh, be part of the technology community. Awesome, that's a great example, Helmar. <clears throat> yeah, thank you guys. I totally agree on on what everybody has been saying. Also, what I want to pitch in is. Uh, my thoughts on how Drupal has been displayed as a huge learning curve uh, with almost impossible to learn un unless you have a university degree, which I uh, do not ag agree with. And I think that we should focus a little bit on uh, getting, uh, <clears throat> getting Drupal out as, uh, as the, the best choice and the good choice for for, for a website uh, like WordPress and Joomla and and just uh, uh, shake shake off that that bad uh, wipe that we have in learning curve and uh, by doing that by showing the community and showing the people how our community is working and that you can always get somebody to help you and I think that is a great asset that we have, and we need to show that a little bit more. Thanks, Homer. Sunit? I see you too, Justin. Yes. Okay. All right. So a couple of things, right? Um, so I think there are two aspects to Drupal doing good, or you know, getting Drupal out there in the community, helping people. Um, uh, one is you know all these you know global training days and other kinds of programs that several of us just mentioned. Uh, where we're you know teaching people how to use Drupal and and um, and you know do useful things with Drupal. Um, so for instance, uh, and and Drupal uh, Drupal Mumbai, we just launched this thing called Drupal Campus Ambassador Program, and the idea there is to you know uh, create more awareness um, of Drupal and of course you know uh, more skills uh, around Drupal. Um, you know, I just mentioned the learning curve, and I think a couple other people mentioned that it, it, it is a painful learning curve. We all know that, but it is what it is, and we got to find ways around that. Um, the other aspect of Drupal doing good is, you know, where you can build simple solutions. Um, I think, you know, in the in the questions, uh, 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 John asked about change.org. Uh, another example with, uh, you know, where I have. First-hand experiences is the Immunize India platform. So Immunize India is is uh, started as um, a vaccination reminder program for India, uh, but it has now been adopted by the World Health Organization uh, and so forth, and it's going to be rolled out globally. The entire backend is run by Drupal, uh, you know, uh, 
Uh, and in fact, in a couple of weeks, I'll be meeting with Code for America specifically around Drupal. Uh, so a lot of things we can do, yes. Awesome. Uh, I have to hear more about your Code for America meeting. Uh, good, let's go to John, and then I'm gonna, we're gonna make time for Ahmad and Ashraf, and then Justin, and then to, who am I missing? Anyone wanna take that one too? Okay, I think we're good, so John. Hi, uh, okay. Uh, so I think, you know, actually we, we have a lot to be proud of in Drupal about our diversity. Um, you know, I've, I've been attending the, the European and US Drupal cons, nearly all of them since Chicago, and I've spoken at camps, you know, in, in um, all across Europe and, and some in Asia and, and, and the US, and I, I think I found a, a community of people who are open and who are sensitive and who, um, and who accept new people. Um, and I think that's really important because I think a, a diverse Drupal is a strong Drupal. Um, I think, you know, getting down to the nuts and bolts, there are going to be some initiatives that could really help. Um, I've worked a lot with Drupal, uh, with companies that have, you know, vested interests in Drupal that are building Drupal. And I think, um, you know, a program of professional exchange between different countries of developers could be something that would be really interesting and, and might spread that diversity. I've worked in um, large non-profit exchange organizations uh, before in Australia, and I think that's been very successful um, in, in kind of bringing bring diversity and bring cultural awareness and communication. Um, so, you know, I, I think it, it's very important that uh, we, we think about diversity and that uh, we reach out into, into more of the world. Um, uh, but, but I also think that we have a, a great set of people and a great starting point. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, John. All right, I'm on. Hopefully. Uh, there you are. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, guys. Uh, uh, all the candidates uh, they uh, uh, they are covering all the points I uh, I was uh, attending to uh, talk about. But uh, I need to focus to uh, two main points or maybe three, uh, the first one, it's the uh, minority or reaching uh, other uh, demographic places or something like, like this, uh, especially uh, for a big scale, on a big scale. Uh, it's a, a very good uh, example that uh, we have uh, Drupal Conegia in India. Uh, I didn't attend it, but uh, I uh, am following the news. Uh, uh, we really need to reach the other uh, cultures and the other uh, uh, languages uh, with more uh, Activities, uh, you know, uh, we we have an especially uh, we don't have uh, any global con in this uh, region uh, uh, or maybe uh, the uh, global training. Uh, the uh, the other point is uh, the, the the learning curve. Uh, maybe it's uh, I'm gonna to look at uh, look to the another uh, look at to uh, from another perspective, uh, which we uh, when we are going to apply the have uh, like. Uh, 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 you know, uh, a kind of Drupal versus Joomla versus WordPress, and uh, uh, very uh, very clear or very uh, very day, uh, but uh, in the other regions uh, or another. Uh, Places we have uh, no clear support for uh, uh, Drupal uh, with the uh, 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 level of uh, professionality. Uh, they need the companies need to have uh, an expert from uh, uh, you know uh, from maybe from uh, uh, Acquia from uh, another uh, country or another brand. Uh, 
so uh, I think we need to reach uh, or focus on uh, other cultures and other, uh, 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 you know, new tracks or new uh, level of uh, uh, simplifying the, the materials or the knowledge or drupal to a lot of levels of uh, maybe for starting from the developer and the designer and also uh, to access the marketing sector uh, maybe from the station it will be uh, very helpful for the the drupal community and the future for uh, for the the drupal future in the upcoming years thank you ah uh, thank you all right Ahmad, thank you for battling your technical difficulties. Uh, Ashraf, I think we'll hear from you and then Justin. Thank you. Um, so I feel I have a lot of direct experience with increasing diversity in the community through the Debug Academy class that I teach. 40% um, <clears throat> of the students in the class are female in the current semester. Um, over 20% are African-American. Um, like I said previously, the backgrounds are very different in terms of work experience coming into the class. And that actually plays out quite nicely um, because we tend to work on real client projects for nonprofit organizations uh, most of the time. And when you have those diverse backgrounds, different people learn different things. Some people come out of it as potentially a content editor. Um, everybody actually leaves at a higher level than that. But some people may enjoy the content editor side of things. Um, people who are already developers can leave the class having already contributed patches to the community. Um, I, think, I think growing programs like that across the country um, would be very effective and also picking up modules that have a status of seeking maintainers and having the classes work on maintaining those modules which is something that we are doing and trying to expand would help the community and help people you know learn to contribute um, and have a sense of ownership of Drupal modules thank you Thanks. 100% women, that's great. Um, Justin, why don't you round us out here? Sounds great. As a minority and a person under the age of 30, I have to say that the, uh, the most ap appealing part of Drupal has been, by far, the immense amount of talent that I've experienced and I've, I've been able to work with. I believe that you'll find that the attraction to Drupal isn't an initiative accomplished by a board member posting tweets every other week or a scholarship or two going to uh, DrupalCon. Uh, I can only imagine that the best route for Drupal to continue to create incredible software is to create incredible software to attract a diverse crowd. Um, the community uh, should continue to be tight and really open um, and also should create more opportunity and allow that opportunity to be publicized for anyone uh, that wants to get involved uh, to be able to get involved. Um, so I, I by far think that diversity is kind of a gauge of the health of a community and Drupal so far has, has astounded me with its, its level of diversity and openness. And I can only see that trend uh, trending upwards into the future. I will say as a last point to attract the younger community, I'm posting a link into our chat. I am uh, very close friends with the rapper Miraculous and he uh, has released a Drupal rap. So if you haven't seen it, you should watch it. And I look forward to arranging him uh, to, to present, if you will, or perform at the DrupalCon if I'm allowed to. <laughs> awesome. I have to say one of my favorite things about this community is how multi-talented we are from like, you know, Campbell's Bertussi's opera singing to, uh, gosh, I got to tell you that there was like this Bollywood dance at DrupalCon Asia and we had some really good dancers in the community. <laughs> so. And uh, next time you talk to Jam, if you'll please, and Jam or Campbell remind them that I, I, uh, I do, do sing opera and I was tapped to sing this year, but I wasn't able to. Ah, okay. I'll, I'll remind them. <laughs> All right. We have a, we have a uh, question here from the community. So, um, 
here it is. Okay, so John, who's on the call, says, my own modus operandi is to use Drupal to improve Drupal and its community. In other words, we try to eat our own dog food, right, to make Drupal better. And this is part of the reason why all of our issue queues are in Drupal and we don't use GitHub and those sorts of things, right? So um, one in a, a couple of calls ago, or in the last couple of calls actually, we talked about creating a tool to bring more, um, the, the ability for the community to reach out to the association more by creating kind of like a, a change.org for Drupal, for example. But what are some other novel ways that we could be using Drupal to improve itself? So how can we use Drupal to create a better Drupal? Any takers on that one? All right, Ken and then Shamala, and then I got you, Tom. One of the, thing, one of the things I think that is, that's important, and it's already been alluded to here, is to find out what people are needing. We understand just because the module is being used, we have to find out what direction, how people are using these modules, what are they using them for, and what do they see on the, the horizon. We can create the best module on the planet, but if the end user doesn't use it, it's just the best module no one has ever heard of. So we have to be able to uh, be able to talk to our end users, say, hey, what do you think about this module? How's it helping you? Uh, what are some of the things, what are some of the uses that you see for this module? And then be able to get that feedback right back into the hands of those that can do something about it. Again, that's a conversation I have every day with our end users as well, but it's something that it's free information, People are more than happy to give it to you, but we have to put ourselves in, in a position where we can get that information from them and again, get it to the community. Awesome, thanks Ken. Okay, we're gonna go to Shemla and then Tom and then Sunit. Sorry for spam spamming the answer. I didn't know the save button was working. <laughs> no worries. Um, so, um, yeah, I think we should, we've always been using Drupal to improve Drupal life. It's been a selling point to the Drupal community that exists on Drupal.org to demonstrate how well Drupal could be used as a community tool. Uh, we are getting in lovely features in which we're gathering more stats. I think one way is to demonstrate Drupal's personalization capabilities. Today, when you log in, it should be able to throw up more uh, prompts and custom messaging that motivate you to participate more. Um, that's an important direction that we should take in moving uh, Drupal towards. Also key is having a mobile app and having to demonstrate uh, cross-platform capabilities and integration capabilities of Drupal and reaching out to more people and more devices and, and more options. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, so. Yeah. Give me one second. Matt, I see you, Matthew, and I see John. Did I see David? I see Danny and Helmar. All right, we're gonna go to Tom next. Thank you, Ollie. I brought this up the other day, and, and, and first of all, what, what Shannon, and I'm not sure who else brought it to the table was when they were talking about the ability to vote up ideas out of the community with something like change.org. Awesome idea. But if we're looking for other ways of using Drupal to uh, improve the community, one thing that I think with Drupal 8 on, on the horizon, or actually on the horizon for people like me, <laughs> there's a little bit of, of trepidation as far as how to onboard or make that transition. And I, I brought it up yesterday, I'll bring it up again. The, the possibility of having a light version, maybe it's a, a distribution of Drupal 8 that already has some stuff built into it, so that those who don't want to start out with a completely vanilla installation could learn their way through without starting from scratch. Um, yeah, Drupal's got a, a, a curve to it. You know, I've been playing this game in Drupal for six, seven years now. Um, but using Drupal to onboard people by making it simple might be a, a good idea. So, thank you. Thanks. All right, see it. Oh, uh, there you go. I'm um, I think there's a couple of things. I think uh, one is that the feedback module uh, could possibly be made a part of core, and anytime you throw up a page, you know, using the templating system, 
uh, you automatically have, you know, the, the feedback option right there, you know, at, for those of you, as you probably know, you know, it, it'll take a screenshot, capture the URL where the issue was found and, uh, and send it back to wherever it needs to go. Uh, that's one thing. I think the, the other thing that we should probably look at, um, and I think somebody just mentioned, you know, collecting more stats, but I think the stats that are collected by, say, the develop module or other modules in core Drupal should be sent back to Drupal.org for further analysis and what kind of analysis, et cetera, we would, you know, need to figure out. Um, uh, but these are some, you know, a couple of quick things that we can do. I really like the idea of, of you know, of, of creating a mobile app um, to showcase what more Drupal can do. Um, so uh, this, just those, those are my thoughts. That's all I have. All right. Thanks, Sunit. And we're going to go Matthew, then John, then that's all I can, I can't read my handwriting now, so give me a second, yeah. Matthew and John. <laughs> that's how I see you too. So I feel like this is uh, built into our DNA already in a lot of ways, and there, we can do things better for sure. But you, you look back over the last, uh, over the last uh, uh, 12, 15 years, and we've been iterating and improving Drupal um, and using the learnings that we've had uh, from previous versions each and every time we release a new version, which is the reason that, uh, you know, we, we had this whole idea that we weren't going to be backwards compatible. We'd always be moving forward and looking at how to improve the, the platform and not be focused on, on, uh, on, uh, um, rather not be stuck on, 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 uh, on features that maybe, maybe, uh, should be dropped. Um, I love the idea of doing a mobile app. I love the idea that we could use more more headless Drupal to show how Drupal can be used as a as a as a back end to do all kinds of amazing cool things. Um, I think these are all terrific ideas, but and I think that uh, that really what we we need to do is uh, is be paying attention to all the cool things that are being done, showcase them. Um, uh, have more case studies and and really uh, help our, ourselves um, iterate on the on the platform uh, as it exists now. Just continue to improve it. Thanks, thanks, Matthew. Okay, we're gonna go John and then Danny. See, I was reading Dan, and I was like, "There's no Dan on this call. What did I write?" But it was Danny, uh, and then Hilmar and Ahmad, and I've got David and Justin also. So John. All right. Uh, one of my uh, one of my big lessons of of uh, my time in Drupal is use Drupal. Uh, you know what it's good at, <laughs> at what it's good at. Um, I think it's um, it's a great web application for certain purposes. I think the Drupal community is effectively using a lot of other channels of communication as well um, to to coordinate. I think Drupal is really strong has really strong community features, and I think there could be more we could do on Drupal.org uh, to connect people and, and enhance. Um, Kind of communication on, on Drupal.org itself, um, which I know Holly is the mammoth task and you are <laughs> striving to do. <laughs> but I think no, you're right though. You're right though. <laughs> um, but you know, I think um, it, the change.org um, kind of idea we had a couple of sessions ago, um, I, I'm, I'm really excited about because I think that's something that we could execute very quickly and I've been talking to uh, a couple of the other candidates about, and it's something that we could accomplish and, and then have people um, bubble these ideas at the top because we, we tend to have discussions deep in issue threads. And, uh, you know, it's great to point to them, but a lot of people lose the context when they have to read through, you know, five pages of notes um, to, to get to the issue. And I think uh, the, the format that we could bring with a, uh, a change.drupal.org uh, could actually uh, kind of eliminate that difficulty and allow more people in the community to engage in those really important issues. Great. All right. Thanks, John. Danny, you want to tackle this one too? Hmm. I think we lost Danny. We lost Danny. Okay. I'm going to circle her. Hilmar, why don't you? <clears throat> yeah, well, uh, one of the things that uh, can can be used is uh, trying to use Drupal, uh, sort of like the incredible machine, where we use Drupal to teach Drupal as a distribution system. So you uh, get uh, almost like a next next finish uh, set of of distro where you uh, then learn 
uh, with real life examples and uh, and I think sometimes that is that is uh, one of the things that we have troubles with when we are uh, teaching Drupal is that we we have a lot of uh, set uh, we have a lot of videos and 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 books and stuff about things that are uh, well maybe a little bit real life but at the same time we don't go into into deep details and I think that we can build a distribution that um, uh, can, can work on that. So we are integrating both uh, the the conventional video teaching and uh, also uh, using Drupal to teach Drupal. Great. Thanks, Omar. Ahmad? OK. Uh... Uh, about uh, uh, the main point, I need to talk about it is uh, about the uh, the real localization features and to be uh, really implemented uh, in the Drupal DNA. You know, I'm uh, one of the members of uh, the, uh, Arabic translation. I'm not speak uh, talking about Arabic especially, but it's uh, uh, the, the feature of localization in Drupal itself. Uh, I think we need to enhance it uh, to be uh, more flexible and. Uh, uh, you know, uh, sometimes we have uh, a, a, a lot of technical issues with the uh, with translation uh, and uh, with localization. Uh, this website or this portal need to be multilingual. So, uh, the localization is need to be enhanced this is one of the point I need uh, I think we need to enhance it in uh, Drupal uh, DNA uh, the other point uh, is uh, the, the mobile app is a very good idea but I need uh, I think we need to make it more uh, more clear uh, what we need to, uh, to point is uh, uh, reaching the other uh, other people, uh, Drupal. Uh, a lot of companies uh, don't care uh, from uh, from some kind of uh, view. The other point is uh, a leak of uh, showcases. You know, uh, the companies, okay, <laughs> the companies need to be, uh, need, need to have uh, a very clear showcases with a lot of varieties, like, uh, like integrating from, uh, migrating from SharePoint to uh, Drupal. And it's a very big case, uh, need to be clear. Thank you. Uh, case studies are always important, for sure. All right. Um, Danny, are you back? I want to go back to you. Hi, I am. Hi. <laughs> you want your crack at this one? Seriously, it was very tragic. Um, yeah, so um, when I think of using Drupal to help Drupal, I think of um, the person who is sitting next to me at the Boston ladder who was trying to figure out how to update help documentation in Drupal and learned that she would need to learn how to do a git push and pull and write a patch and roll a patch in order to change a comma. And the person who did who, who commented on the survey that I sent out a couple of years ago for my thesis research, who basically made the same statement. I shouldn't need to like know how to roll a patch to change your help docs. So when I think about the ways that Drupal can sort of help itself, I think we put a lot of barriers in front of really intelligent and smart people in terms of helping people figure out how to use our software. Great point. Uh, David. Uh, so um, <clears throat> if the question is aimed at, I guess, specifically Drupal.org and our particular ecosystem, I actually would have a bit of a dissenting opinion where I, I think that we've seen over the years when we constantly wait to find a Drupal solution for every problem that we have, it doesn't always work out. 
and we shouldn't always look at Drupal as being the one hammer that will solve every problem. Uh, we've definitely gotten away from that, and I think getting away from that is actually a good thing. But we can stick to Drupal's strengths, and one thing we may want to start exploring is um, how do we use multi, uh, uh, Drupal's multilingual capabilities, which is something that's inherent in the product that we know that Drupal does really well, and maybe we should start uh, bringing some of that into Drupal.org so that we can have more translations and reach a much larger audience. Great. Thanks, David. Uh, Justin, and then we'll round out with Ashraf, I think. Thank you. I think that every site uh, that we build in Drupal um, that's, that's made excellently, that, that demonstrates a new edge of technology that really brings uh, people's imagination to the forefront in Drupal, um, that's what we do to use Drupal as a tool to build Drupal. Um, every module that bridges the gap over a solution uh, that, that increases, increases the potential for future developers to do something even more amazing, to me that's the most interesting part of Drupal and it will continue to grow and to be uh, better used every single time somebody does something amazing in Drupal, regardless once again of what the Drupal Association does. Now what we can do with the Drupal Association is highlight those, those extra uh, phenomenal sites, those um, imaginative, interesting ways that Drupal is being used, and share that with the community as effectively as we can. Um, only, only once the Drupal world realizes all the capabilities of the Drupal world, uh, that's, that's when we find the perfect marriage of marketing, meeting, actual boots on the ground um, when it comes to giving Drupal a better name for Drupal. Great. Thanks, Justin. And Ashraf, you want to round this one out for us? Sure. So, um, to use Drupal to help improve Drupal, one thing that I'm I that always crosses my mind is meetups. Drupal local meetups tend to be organized on Meetup.org or um, however else, and I think that that's one thing that we could definitely handle through a subdomain on Drupal.org, maybe subdomain itself isn't important, but maybe a way for people to um, to essentially go to Drupal.org and say, I want to create a local community. And by doing that, maybe they can be creating um, a multi-site or at least be using um, a Drupal built, Drupal powered event uh, website for us to publish events. Uh, basically lower the barrier uh, for someone to create Drupal events while also um, centralizing where local events are listed. Great. All right. Thank you for that. Okay. Did I miss anyone? You guys ready for one more here? Okay. Yesterday we – David is not speaking. Yes, yeah, true. You're not. Uh, and I did call on you. I just checked my list. All right. So, um, so yesterday, apparently, I needed a little love. So I asked uh, candidates on the call to identify a bright spot in the association that they felt like we should replicate or do more of. So we talked about that. Um, today, I'll go the other way and say, what is a low light? What is something that you've seen in the association and you thought, that was really crappy, and I never want to see that happen again? Uh, you know, and so that's uh, – Never want to see that again. Here's how I would fix it. Could you rephrase that one more time? Yeah, sure. So what's something you've seen from the association where you thought that should never have happened? Here's how I would have handled it. All right, Matthew, you can go first. As soon as you find that mute button. <laughs> it's not a matter of finding it. It's a matter of it. Uh, after I click it, uh, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Ah, okay. Um, I I think that one of the one of the sort of low, sad, difficult, um, all around moments was um, Morton's uh, Morton's uh, uh, decision to leave the board. Um, and there are all kinds of uh, of reasons around it, but I feel like there's a ton of uh, of spin. Um, and, and that uh, it was just tough all around it, tough for, for, 
for the association, it was tough for um, it was for, for for Morton in terms of making that decision. It was tough for the Indy Comp, and I feel like there could have been some ways that uh, that uh, um, uh, perhaps that could have that could have uh, that could have uh, ended in a in a, in a less in a less uh, um, difficult way. I don't have any specific any specific um, strategies around it. Except to say that he communicated. Um, I, th I feel like I feel like we exactly were in that sort of flood like um, and, and, and perhaps fast communication helps helps us uh, as a community. Okay, Matthew, just uh, for future answers too, I think you may want to turn your video off, unfortunately. Sad face. All right, any other takers on that question? David? Was it that bad? <laughs> um, that I've heard a lot of complaints about from people is the way that sometimes the international events are run and I think that can be improved on a lot of times um, especially with the the marketing focused how sometimes the uh, like the Drupal cons outside the US are not always communicated and marketed in a way that's um, the same way that someone who's in that country would do it um, and it I found it confusing for example that um, like the DrupalCon in Bogota, which was a completely local event to the Spanish community in South America, was an event, you know, run entirely by the DA out of Portland with a website entirely in English, with events and sessions run entirely in English, and then people surprised why, you know, the, the attendance was much lower than it possibly could have. Um, so I would, I would like to see maybe the DA uh, put a better focus on um, having a lot of those events um, not entirely run by the local communities, but maybe a far greater amount of input by them. Great. Shamala and then Ken. Um, I think one thing um, DA is doing uh, uh, in terms of recognizing talent um, maybe we do that at triple cons and uh, other um, events, but recognizing local talent is very key, and we need to have a constant strategy to make sure that um, we don't just recognize uh, talent that is overall but more local because we need to constantly strengthen. Um, more regional and local participations so have come up with a strategy where we're able to recognize and bring showcases of community activities and participation which is uh, local in age. Great, thanks Shamala. Uh, we're going to go to Ken, any other, and then John, and I see you Justin. Okay, um, I'm going to say that I think the release of Drupal 8 could have had a lot more fanfare, could have been done a, could have been done a bit bigger. Um, I don't think we give ourselves enough credit. Uh, for example, the, the Olympics is coming up. Their primary website is done in Drupal. Nobody knows that. And it's a pretty hot website. But if we don't find ourselves putting more energy. I mean, we say we love Drupal. We say we're excited about it. I just don't see it. I don't feel it. I hear it, but I don't feel it. So mm -hmm. I just don't, I think we need to find where that energy is. And, and I would have liked to have seen Drupal 8 come out with a lot more bang, a lot more boom, and a lot more uh, press, uh, more so than it did. Okay, great. John and then Justin? I'm probably going to dive right down to the weeds because um, <laughs> that's the thing that I can think of. I generally love all the Drupal cons I go to and, you know, lots of people I talk to are passionate about Drupal. So maybe uh, not in touch with some of those other problems. But, you know, I think um, we talked a little while ago about how to make um, kind of 
Drupal uh, contributions a little bit more accessible to people. And one of the uh, one of the practices I think that was talked about about altering um, Drupal.org a while ago was um, you know making it a little bit more like GitHub or a little bit more like another development platform where uh, there's the ability to, for people to contribute either you know through through an inbuilt editor or uh, you know or the GitHub way, which is you know some additions like pull requests and things like that. And I know that um, there was, I, the, the last time I, I spoke to the, uh, the association there, I thought there had been a decision made um, to actually integrate the ability to, to point to GitHub, um, you know, and to kind of integrate that functionality that way, which seems to make a lot more sense than trying to replicate it all in Drupal.org, which would be huge and hard. Um, and maybe the wrong the wrong technology basis, but then that didn't get done. And I don't I don't know the details of that. And uh, you know, I think it's a little bit unfair, Holly, because maybe you don't get the chance to respond to all of these. But um, what I think <laughs> what I think it points to is um, this idea of getting consensus about an idea and then going for it. Um, you know, and I, I I've talked about that in terms of Drupal's direction. I think um, that that may be um, something we can work on as well uh, in terms of hard. Uh, technology and, uh, and and community decisions um, is being dare being more daring, um, but and maybe some of that comes through, uh, you know, some more consensus initiatives. Awesome, thanks, John. Okay, Justin. I will say that um, I, I think Drupal Association could work a little bit harder to have uh, youth in leadership, uh, especially working towards appealing towards a youthful, more youthful demographic. Um, but other than that, I, I have to kind of rally against this question a little and also <laughs> rally against some of the, the kind of ethos of the community in that uh, we as users of Drupal and we as uh, people who have made our entire livelihoods off of Drupal, um, we kind of want to put blame on, on another organization for a lack of excitement or sometimes events being poorly planned. Uh, I've talked about this before, but Drupal is very much a duocracy. When somebody wants to see something happen, they do it. And when everybody else has nothing but criticism instead of hard work to put behind that idea, you'll see that one person kind of rise to the top in leadership over that. So I believe that when Drupal, uh, when the Drupal Association allows itself to take blame for um, the community having a lack of excitement, then that's a mistake. That uh, each member of the Drupal community needs to kind of pick up our own work and make sure that every single one of us is doing everything we can to publicize, to evangelize, and to carry forward um, the cause of Drupal. Uh, that's that's the most interesting thing to me. Instead of blaming someone else, making sure that we're all doing everything we can to push it forward. I appreciate that, but I will also acknowledge that sometimes we screw up. So <laughs> that happens. Anyone else want to take a stab at this one? Danny, and then Helmar. All right. I'm sorry. I really have to call BS on duocracy. I just do. Um, because when you say this is a duocracy, if you see something, do it. I watched a person try to just do a change to documentation and she couldn't figure out how. I tried to make a change at the last contrib sprint in LA to a page called community so I could write and do what I do really well. I couldn't figure out how and then I was told not to. So when we say that Drupal is a duocracy and we say that if you see something, fix it, if you don't give people avenues to actually do the work to fix it or you somehow stand in their way, well then you're immediately creating something that's no longer a duocracy. So sorry, so Box, I'm gonna be on it for a minute. I just gotta go there. You, me you mentioned that you do climb on top of one of those every once I in a do. while. I do. I enjoy them. <laughs> They're really cathartic and entertaining. <laughs> Hilmar, what about you? And then I see you too, Tom. Well, uh, thank you, Danny. You actually said what I was going to say. <laughs> um, I think uh, part of it is that we, we still have a, a, a big uh, problem with uh, having people to, to start contributing. It's a uh, it's a huge learning curve, and uh, I have tried twice uh, starting to contribute in for core, and I failed, which I don't feel it's it's a good thing. I because I think that I can really contribute for those uh, projects, and and it was really hard for me not to not to be able to do that. And I also think that the DA needs to be 
the, the one one of the well no sorry that's not not part of DA actually so yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna skip that one. <laughs> All <right>. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Omar. Tom. Thanks, Holly. One thing that I saw would have been in Chicago, the DrupalCon in Chicago. That was the first one I ever went to. And it was super exciting. You know, D7 was on the verge of coming out or coming out. And it was all new to me. But I was looking around, and the people who were there, it was a very young crowd, um, people running around their camos and their hard drives and their khaki pockets. And it was really cool. I mean, I was the old guy walking around. But then as each progressive year, suits started showing up and people who were checking things out to see if it was a worthy, worthwhile investment. And the number of kids started disappearing. And then we started getting older and we were saying everything's wonderful and then the kids disappeared. And I thought, okay, I've been going to all these cons, where did they go? And I can't answer that one, but maybe that's something that I can say. The, when we sit in a bubble and you say everything's going great, we lost some of those people, and I don't know why. Um, to look into that and try to bring them back in because there were some great kids, and I don't know where they went. That's all. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Okay, I want to hear from Ahmad and then Justin. We're going to have our first ever rebuttal on one of these calls. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, the point I, uh, I'm going to say, it's about the contribution. Uh, I have just, uh, it's a case happened with me. Uh, you know, uh, as a community manager, um, maybe I'm just a kind of a, a reference uh, to some uh, guys need to be a contributor with, uh, with, the, uh, with Drupal module or something, or maybe the Drupal core. Uh, but the the main uh, feedback it's uh, uh, you know some uh, some people need need to be more simple to be uh, uh, able to contribute to the modules or the or the core modules for Drupal. Uh, maybe uh, some uh, maybe I can see uh, see it it's uh, okay and it's easy. But uh, we need to consider other guys, uh, especially the newcomers. Uh, when they say it's a little bit hard to contribute, it's a, uh, a very bit complex uh, process, some kind of uh, points like uh, that. It's okay. Oh, thank you. All right, Justin, go for it. Let's see what happens. Sure. So, Danny, I, I, can't, uh, I can't express to you how impressed I am and, and appreciative I am of your, impra your impassion. And candid response to my answer. And Drupal experience is a is a kind of paint by numbers. You you get a different experience everywhere you go. And I will say that the first and and uh, really best experience I have in development is actually contributing to Drupal eight core because I, I happen to have a community around me. And I understand how difficult that might be for somebody that doesn't have a world class or a, a, an experienced Drupal eight developer right next to them helping them through the steps. So. You know, that's been my experience is having somebody uh, always in the community ready and willing to help and, and jump in. And I'm sad to hear that somebody in the Drupal community might not have had that experience. So uh, I, I apologize if I overstepped my boundaries. But at the same time, I've been welcome to a, a huge amount of resources, always available, always willing to, to reach out to me and help me, whether it was in IRC chat channels, whether it's the incredibly detailed resources that are available on Drupal.org to be able to contribute, whether it was YouTube videos that I watched on how to even download IRC and, and to contribute. Um, I, I have been uh, easily, I've had easily accessible resources in Drupal, and so that, that's been my experience. So I, I hope that, that you forgive me for maybe speaking out of line, Danny. Uh, let's go back to Matthew. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, you meant well. Yeah. Thanks, Danny. Let's go back to Matthew. Let's see Can what happens. Can you hear me here. okay? Yep. Awesome. So, I mean, I think what... There we go. Oh, there That's we go. better. That's better. <laughs> um, so I think one of the things that we tend to forget is that contributions come in all shapes and sizes. 
um, contributions aren't always code. They aren't always uh, they aren't always uh, um, uh, documentation. Con contributions can come in the form of uh, an organization act acting as a fiscal sponsor for for uh, for a camp. Contributions can happen as uh, as uh, as a designer. Um, trying to help out uh, uh, do a better better design for for uh, for, a, for a campsite or, or for the for the uh, uh, overall Drupal Drupal, uh, Drupal Drupal site itself uh, contributions can happen as people who who put on camps um, who set up uh, circumstances where folks are able to um, um, do uh, code days with kids, all kinds of different things. So I do think that uh, that that while the the idea of geocracy is uh, is a little a little bullshitty, like Danny said, um, that only only uh, is the case. I think if you if you're if you're looking to um, perhaps perhaps uh, contribute in a new way that you're not uh, uh, accustomed to, and I really wish that there was better ways for us to help insert people into those kinds of contrib contributions. Um, but I will say that there's still tons of opportunities, um, and uh, and we should we should embrace our strengths as much as possible, and uh, and uh, improve on our sort of uh, weaker areas as we're able. Thanks. And then, um, Sunit, I think you've had your hand raised for a bit. Um, so I think I think you know um, for. The community grows as people are more engaged and clearly contributing to code and other ways um, is a way to grow the community. And it's just one of those things, you know, as you grow beyond a certain point, um, a so-called tipping point, you start, you know, having to create a little bit of a bureaucracy, putting rules around things, you know, best practices, things to do, things not to do, how to do things when you do them and so forth. Um, the challenge always for any any professional organization um, is where do you draw the balance between you know having people contributing willy nilly succeeding succeeding not succeeding or you know versus making sure that everything that is so far does not break and it's it's a balance there's no good answer you you got to try a few things you know throw things on the wall and see what sticks as it were um, uh, that's that was just more of a comment rather than <laughs> anything else that's, that's all I have to say thanks Sunit. okay did I miss anyone anyone else want to weigh in here I forgot what the original question was <laughs> all right <laughs> um, that happens to me yeah uh, uh, Molly you, actually the original question was what uh, did the uh, DA do bad oh yeah okay that one <laughs> Apparently, with the remembering the question they were asking. Yeah, well, I'm going to blame the jet lag. Um, yesterday, I tweeted at myself, and this morning, I went to Starbucks and got a cup of tea, got to the office, and made myself a tea. So, <laughs> coming back from India is hard work. <laughs> um, good. Well, let's see if we can get uh, one, more, one more question in um, before we uh, finish up for the day. So what I would love to hear from you is, you know, what do you think is the most critical issue facing Drupal today? And what do you think the association should be doing to address that? What's the most critical issue for Drupal the project, whether that's the software or the community or any aspect of the project, what should the association be doing to help address it? So we'll go Matthew, Hilmar, Ken, and John. Attrition, attrition, attrition. We're losing people, um, and in fact, we've got this has been going on in a back channel a little bit here um, in the in the webinar chat. Um, and I think we all agree that uh, that we need more young people um, coming into the project and engaged, uh, being more engaged in the project. Um, I think that uh, what we've seen is our our overall age has gotten older um, over the years, over the last decade, as I've been involved. Project. I've seen seen um, a lot of us uh, um, grow up and have families, and um, we lose people uh, because of burnout, and we're just not replacing those people in the same kind of way. I think that we need to find ways to to uh, attract attract uh, attract younger people who might uh, might be interested in more cool technologies or perceived cool technologies. Drupal eight, I think, will help some with that, um, but um, 
um, a big part of what we need to be doing is uh, is uh, going into schools um, and uh, and engaging engaging young people, doing stuff like Matthew Tift has done in his uh, in his uh, um, in his community where uh, coding is directly part of the curriculum in his school district now. Um, so I'll I'll leave it at that and let somebody else talk. Thanks, Hilmar. Yeah, thank you. Um, one, of the, one of the things that I've, I've been uh, working, having some troubles with is that we, we need to find a better way to uh, get the modules that are running, um, uh, working with bug fixes and, and not waiting for a huge release on every module instead of just rolling out bug fixes for it. So very often you will have to go into the... Uh, discussion threads to find the patch or something that will uh, fix uh, the problems that you have with the module and or that you will have the patch in in the dev phase and not rolled out to the production until sometimes two years later and I think we need to uh, find a way to to get people in the mindset that we need to roll out bug fixes for the modules as much as we need to roll out modules and uh, that really bothers me a lot because there are a lot of modules that I use that uh, I have problems with uh, just because of that. And I have to have uh, fixes all over the place and I'm scared to upgrade them when a real upgrade comes. Thanks, Omar. Okay, I've got Ken, John, Tom. Anyone else? I see you, David. I see you, Shamala. So let's go with Ken. I was asking you on chat. Uh, Holly, would you please repeat the question? Oh, I did type it in there. Question mm -hmm. is, um, uh, what's the biggest issue facing the project today? How do you think the association should address it? Okay. Now, as far as Drupal itself, I think where Drupal is right now, there are more than enough smart people to help continue to move Drupal forward. I really think, and this has been a recurring theme tonight, I think really believe and I'm convicted on the fact that we have to start planting seeds now even though Drupal 9 is nowhere near being released we have to have a younger audience prepared to receive Drupal 9 and carry that message on here's an example and I'm gonna date myself people don't judge me all right so I like Facebook my daughters do not they use something completely different because they've since moved on from Facebook it did not keep up with their particular demographic so they came onto the scene and started using something completely and totally different, whereas me, still using it, still does what it needs to do. Drupal is a lot like that right now, only because it has not reached out and started planting those seeds into the minds and into the hands of the developers and the designers and coders of tomorrow. It's something that absolutely has to happen. And if it doesn't, again, technology is moving. We have to move with it. So that is what the community should be focusing on. The technology piece will take care of itself. Okay, excellent. Thanks, Ken. John, I, I've got you too, Sharmila. And Sunit, I've got you also. I think we have to be brave uh, as a community. Um, you know, um, Ken, maybe you were talking about your daughters using Snapchat. <laughs> I think you know what we talk about uh, now is the millennial architect that has a has hundreds of tools they can use to build experiences. And uh, Drupal has a real uh, has has a real risk and threat that it can be left behind as an architecture uh, if it doesn't stay relevant and if it doesn't move on. Um, I think you know we've seen big parts of the community even fall off and fork uh, because they're afraid of what we will become. And I think some of that has led to us stagnating. I think you can see in Andres' blogs recently where he's reaching out and saying, what about this and what about this and how about we go in these directions? There's lots of interesting ways we could go. Um, we actually need to pick a direction uh, because we can't be everything to everyone. And, uh, and that's what I want to see. Okay. And Tom. Sure. Um what I see as being the most critical issue right now is a fear that I have that Drupal is going to become a platform of the privileged 
In other words, your large corporations embrace it. And those of us who were really cool on six, really cool on seven, all of a sudden say, you know what? Maybe Jen Lampton was right and we, we go over and do her thing. Um, don't want to do that. You know, I want D8 to be something that continues to grow a community. But there is a fear that I have that it's, it's going to be your mega corporations that embrace it. And the little developers like me might have to move elsewhere. And I, I, I really don't want to see that happen. Thanks, Tom. Uh, David, Shamala, Sunit, Danny, after that. Hi. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of agree and disagree with what everyone's saying. Um, yes, we do have attrition. Uh, we've always had attrition, but it may not be as big of an issue as people think. Um, I'm, I probably spend the most time in court issue queues, maybe, than anyone here. Um, and I also participate a lot in the core mentoring program. And I will tell you that we do have a huge number of contributors. But the biggest problem I think that's going on right now is, um, and what's not been addressed, is we have also a huge skill gap, I believe. Uh, we have a lot of people contribute, but we don't have enough people who are contributing at that top level who are able to put in a significant number of hours and actually have the skills necessary to solve a lot of the bigger problems, especially as time goes on and Core has become, Drupal itself has become more sophisticated and more complicated. Um, so what I would like to see is maybe the DA participate a little more in supporting uh, mentoring programs for contributors and um, participate, participate more in supporting education and training so that we can take that really small group that exists at the top who are able to solve the really difficult problems and expand that group as much as problem so that those people are not the ones who are relied on to do all the heavy lifting, which leads to all the burnout that we see in those people. Great. Thanks, David. Shamla? I think the key to the Drupal project is that we should, as much as we are going to be focusing on attrition, is that the project itself stays current in the way it provides solutions. So as much as we strengthen what is our key competencies, um, in terms of content management system and integration capabilities. I think the direction, the direction that we continue to evolve and change and be current, move to something that's like device agnostic solutions and user experience that are consistent with the need of the uh, current audience is key to the project's success. The need to evolve with what is contemporary. And uh, I also second um, David that we need to focus on the quality of contributions. As we scale uh, in terms of number of contributions, we also need to put focus to see how we can enhance quality contributions as well. Great. All right, Shamla, we're going to go to Sunit and then Danny. I, who was next? Oh, Suna, it's you. You're oh, ready. Thank you. All right. All right. So, uh, so I think uh, you know when you when you look at the history of open source projects, and and the very first open source project was Berkeley, you know, uh, Unix BSD, uh, more than thirty five, you know, about thirty five years ago. <clears throat> very very few projects or products in general have longevity. Drupal has had fifteen years. Drupal either needs to evolve in new directions. Um, which is what Shamla and others said, um, or it is simply going to face attrition. Um, I concur with Tom that Drupal, I mean, to my, to, from what I'm seeing, seeing anecdotally, and we've done over 100 projects uh, in Drupal, is that Drupal is becoming, you know, a product for the elite, as it were, for the Fortune 500, who are increasingly adopting it. Um, given its learning curve, et cetera, I'm seeing a lot of small companies, smaller, small organizations moving away from Drupal. They're either going to WordPress or uh, you know, Joomla or whatever, but mainly WordPress is what I'm seeing. Um, to, uh, to, so continuing the evolution, I mean, and I strongly believe, right, this is where Drupal embedded, things like embedded Drupal, Drupal as an application server, these are all in, 
important directions for Drupal. Drupal can already do this. There is no rocket science per se to this. Um, uh, but it's a question of positioning, you know, what, what, I mean, if, if we keep thinking of Drupal as a web content management system, well, there's plenty of competition. Um, and the other systems have now had time, and now specifically I'm going to talk about AEM, Adobe uh, Experience Manager. At this point, Adobe Experience Manager is a superior product. Uh, in, a, in a number of important ways. The only place where it, it is not superior is its price, you know, compared to Drupal. Uh, why this has to do with, you know, the fact that it's middle tier, um, has, is effectively like an application server. There are connectors to all kinds of things inside the enterprise, which Drupal simply does not have today. Uh, and I don't see that happening. Um, and that is something I certainly would like to influence if I could. Uh, so that, that, was, that was my point. Christian, you got to grow the pie. Thanks, Sunit. Okay, we've got Danny and then uh, and then Ashraf. So I I'm a user experience designer, and one of the things I know as a user experience designer is there's something called a learning effect. There is a buildup of knowledge that you gain from using a um, piece of software from for a period of time. And one of the things that we have unfortunately done with every major release of Drupal is we have basically completely changed the game on the people who use it. Um, I told people when I started using Drupal in Drupal 6, you cry your way, your, your way through the first three sites and then you love it. If, you've not, if you're not a developer, I should say. Um, Drupal 6 to 7 completely changed the way you develop sites, completely changed the way you theme them. Drupal 8 is going to do it again. Part of the reason that people started a started dropping off after from Drupal 6 to 7 was because of the increased complex complexity on the back end developer side. And now I'm seeing more of that happen on Drupal 8. One of the things that we have to respect in our desire to innovate is our is the knowledge that people build up over using this stuff for a period of time, especially given that we work on the web where deadlines are really tight, a learning curve, we don't have time for a, the amount of learning curve that Drupal throws at people from version to version. Um, so I feel like that's one of the things that's gonna hold back the project over the long haul. Okay, thanks Danny. Ashraf. Give a second there, hopefully. Ashraf, if you can hear me. I'm giving you your moment on this one. There we go. One moment, sorry. <laughs> no worries. He's going to come back in. This has definitely been our most technically challenging. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for hanging in there. All right, sorry about that. So I'm going to build off of what Danny was saying a bit, um, which is so from a different angle when in a lot of the interviews you'll hear Dries talking about whether he would pick PHP as the language to build Drupal in again and he always says yes because more people know PHP um, and it's easier to learn um, with things like Drupal 8 it seems like we are almost directly countering that by bringing Symfony in um, we're increasing the, the complexity significantly and we're losing the ability to bring in people who are at a lower level um, of, you know, at an earlier stage in their careers as programmers. Um, and instead, we're almost making Symfony a prerequisite for developers, at least. Um, people who know Symfony are already working in Symfony and being paid well and happy with it, in my opinion. Um, that there's a lot of people who fit that description. And for them to pick up Drupal, they're just going to have to learn a lot more with benefit, but with the risk of, you know, Drupal 9, who knows what it's going to do or how much it's going to change and how much more they're going to learn. I don't think there's that much incentive for them to drop Symphony or to pick up Drupal before, for example, the contrib space is very much developed, at least. 
Um, so I think I think we almost have like two conflicting messages. One of one of them is Drupal is more easy, easily accessible because it's built in PHP, so people earlier on can start with it. And then we have the opposite message, which is Drupal 8 now needs, it's harder to understand than WordPress naturally, but it's actually much harder because you need to already know Symfony or you need to learn Symfony. Um, and I think if we're taking that approach, we are restricting ourselves to enterprise uh, companies who are willing to train their own staff. Um, and we're not making it that feasible for people to teach Drupal themselves in their own time. Okay. Thanks, Ashraf. Okay. I think I made it through everyone. And I've been a terrible timekeeper. And I apologize for that. But I appreciate everyone uh, being brief and getting through the questions with us. Did I? Oh, I didn't. Nope. Justin's like, no, you forgot me. Sorry. Justin. <laughs> I know it's late. Out. I know it's late, so I promise I'll keep this short. Um, okay. I think the issue hits close to home for me. I sit actually in Asheville on several commissions working with the Asheville City Council to bring jobs and talent to Asheville. Um, as somebody that, you know, I'm 27 years old, but I started in the technology business when I was 24. And uh, at the time, had opportunity to go into Ruby, had opportunity to go into Python, um, a lot of really interesting companies with other interesting technologies. And Drupal was the most appealing because it had the best community for me, and that was what was important. I would say that the, that vision is skewed, though, that most of the, the young people in this community or in the development community are interested in the biggest and coolest things that they can build. Uh, it's less about the ease of use. It's less about the uh, somebody said money. You're right. It's, most times, it's not about the money. It's about the lifestyle and the ability to build something that will last or build something that is cooler and newer than anything else. So um, I, I would completely agree uh, with Ashraf that the kind of the learning curve there is two different problems. We're talking about Drupal's ease to use and also Drupal can do really cool things. Well, sometimes those don't meet on the same spectrum. So really having a strategic look at where Drupal can go and what holes it can fill within the current uh, other CMSs and, and languages um, that's the hard question and we need to ask ourselves that and then move in a direction for the betterment of the language and uh, I, I would be excited to do that qualitative and quantitative analysis. Awesome. Thanks, Justin. All right. Anyone else want to let me know? I didn't get to them. Going once, going twice. Okay, you guys, thanks so much for uh, sticking, sticking with us and answering uh, these questions. Uh, it's great to see such a diversity of opinion there. It's really hard to sit on this end and not um, share my own opinion, but um, yeah. you know, when one of you is elected, we'll get all the chances in the world to do that. <laughs> um, so thanks again for your, your time here tonight. Just as a reminder, I'm gonna go ahead and post the recording of this session up uh, on the website probably tomorrow morning because tonight is knit night, you guys go to knit night. Uh, probably get that up tomorrow morning. Um, and then we're going to go, we're going to have a whole week of uh, just Q&A on your candidate pages. So I encourage you guys to go ahead and share your profile pages out, uh, you know, using social media and on Drupal.org, everywhere else. Uh, get people to get engaged and ask you questions there. Um, and for our audience to make sure that you guys are going and asking questions there as well. And then um, uh, last reminder is that voting starts on March 7th, so get ready for that. And uh, make sure you encourage everyone in the Drupal community to vote. And David, I did not get my scarf back yet, so. Boo. Oh, fingers crossed. I'm about ready to like stake out the airport, see when the plane comes back in, <laughs> do a search myself. <laughs> Um, all right, well thank you guys so much, and I really appreciate the great conversation, and I will talk to you all soon. Thanks, right. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, guys. Thanks for this Bye -bye. opportunity. Thanks, everyone.